Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Wrestling Show here on the W3 Network every Sunday at 12pm. Thank you for joining me and subscribing. And ladies and gentlemen, we are getting so much closer to Seven Deadly in Stage 2. I'm sure by now you've seen Seven Deadly in Stage 1, right? If you haven't, why not? We gave it to you for free here on the W3L Network. Head back and have a look at it. Pause this show, go and watch it and then come back. It's okay, I'll wait for you. Oh, you're back. Excellent. So now you're up to speed with what happened at Seven Deadly in Stage 1. Stage 2 happens on May the 10th in Edinburgh. What an event it is going to be. Four men have advanced to the semi-finals and the matches have been paired off as follows. On one side, we're going to be seeing Edinburgh's bad boy Liam Thompson taking on also Edinburgh's original Craig Stevens. On another side, it's the battle of the former tag team champions. Taylor Bryden takes on Dickie Divers. The semi-finals are fought under submission rules. Who will win those matches? Who will advance to the final? You'll find it on the night. And the final, of course, is a last man standing contest. The winner of that goes to Resolution 13 later this year to get a shot at the heavyweight championship. And in addition to that, we've got a big non-tournament tag team match. As you'll see, Johnny Lyons and Jayla Dark take on the very good Mr. Hugh and G. Mackey and Emily Hayden. It's also another match for in, but I'm going to tell you about in just a moment or two. But remember, later that month, we're going into Geisley, that being particularly May the 31st, then on June the 1st through Newcastle, June 2nd, Stockton on Tees, and June 14th we're back up in Broxburn. All of these events are sponsored by our pals at Crafty Connoisseur. Thank you so much to them. And let me welcome aboard Pizza Daddy, who are helping to sponsor our event in Newcastle on June the 1st. By sponsoring a WTL event, they've already shown they've got some good taste, just like their pizzas. So if you are in or around Newcastle, get on to Pizza Daddy for a slice of the action and pizza as well, obviously. And tell them that WTL said hello. And of course, if you or somebody you know would like to sponsor WTL event, get in touch with us. We'll tell you how you can make that happen. Now at 7 Deadly Sin Stage 1, the XL Luke Aldridge was unceremoniously removed from the tournament in the quarterfinals by Taylor Bryden. Eager to bounce back and continue his winning ways, he is in action here this week on Wrestling Showdown defending, appropriately enough, the Wrestling Showdown Championship. He's got to defend it against Jason Reed, a man who's had eyes on singles gold since returning recently to W3L. He's never held a singles title. Could this week be his week? Or will the Aldridge era continue? Who can say? Let's go down to ringside and we'll find out. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a singles contest set for one fall and is for the WCL Wrestling Showdown Championship! And you said, first of all, your challenger from Dunfermline, weighing 187 pounds, Jason Reed! And his opponent. He is from the World Peninsula and weighs in at 17 stone. This is the W3L Wrestling Showdown Champion, the Exile Wick Aldridge. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe Fordyce with your Wrestling Showdown, and appropriately enough, we've got the Wrestling Showdown Championship up for grabs in this contest. There's a challenger, Jason Reed's just being checked over by the referee. And opposing him is the Wrestling Showdown Champion, the XL Luke Aldridge. Once the referee is satisfied, the both men are carrying foreign objects or things they shouldn't be having on them. They will call for the bell. And there's the championship being raised aloft. And so the XL Luke Aldridge with a test here. Jason Reed. And there's the bell. So we could be seeing a brand new wrestling show the champion. She never have a hot potato as of late. If you think about it, Dickie Divers was the inaugural champion, held it for quite a while before losing it at Remedy to Arch Nemesis Taylor Bryden. I'm sure you've seen that. It's up for free on the WTL network. And then Bryden in his first defence lost it to the Excel Look Aldridge. It was thanks, of course. Two Dickie Divers, he interfered in the contest in a triple threat match. And Dylan Aldridge to get the victory and take the championship now. He will have a showdown with Aldridge against Jason Reed. 
Anthony Clifton at side headlock. Now these two men are no strangers to each other whatsoever. We have battled many times here in W3L throughout the years. And often the tag team wins. Uh, Jason Reed, because former tag team champion Kevin Williams. Uh, they won the tag team championship from Luke Aldridge and Johnny Lyons. It's actually a really weird team to think about these days. As the two men have taken very different career paths, don't see eye to eye. But they were a team at one point and a championship holding team at that. And Aldridge in line lost the belts to Reed and Williams. And they had numerous matches. Uh, some of Jason's earliest WCL matches were against the XL the Goldridge. I know the rules, referee. He says he knows the rules and just smacks Jason Reed. Of course, Luke Aldridge has changed a lot since back then. And that's back in the late 2015, early 2016. Oh, Jason Reed up and over. And a drop kick from close range as well down to his XL. Luke Aldridge has become much more rounded. He's got a different name if nothing else. With an image as well. And he gets out of the way. Just rolls the floor to break the middle. Jason Reed, do you think, will want a more up tempo pace? And as Aldridge will just slow it down. So we'll see who gets to take the terms in this contest. Now, Luke Aldridge very recently competed in Seven Deadly Sins Stage 1. And that is also up for feet on the W3 on the network. I'm sure you've seen that by now. Luke Aldridge who took his attention of Jason Reed and is paying for it now. On a headbutt by the XL. So in the uh, seven deadly sins, he got eliminated in the opening round battle royal. And then he got eliminated from the quarter finals by Taylor Bryden, who, who, as you can imagine, the big smile on his face, considering he got to defeat the man that took the wrestling showdown title off him. The title was not on the line in that match, to be fair. And Bryden has got a victory over all those and lies. And I'm sure the manager, keeping that in mind, as it pertains to who's going to challenge for the showdown championship. Uh, coming out of this edition of Wrestling Showdown. Back elbow by the XL, the lights come on. The spotlight on these two men, spotlight on W3L. And who's going to take the spotlight as the Showdown champion? Will Aldridge retain? Will it be Reed winning it? Anything is possible. Currently Aldridge is in control of the match. And I can mention for you just an methodical pace. Pummeling Jason Reed. And of course, Jason Reed, not long since returning to W3L, he's been off elsewhere and uh, still continuing to wrestle constantly. So it's not like he's been sitting around the house not doing anything. He's in arguably the best shape he's ever been in. He's wrestling at a better level, certainly, with more experience than his belt than he had in the tackle with all those previously. So we'll see if that benefits him. Of course, he has a crowd on his side. Aldridge slowly down that chin lock. Jason Reed going back up to her back elbows. In the midsection, a handful of hair stops the momentum. Now we've seen Luke Aldridge use tactics like that. I mean, he always was one of the cheap. He's always going to bend the rules. And it's really got worse over the past, what, six, seven, eight months or so. I mean, certainly uh, his match at Resolution last year we overcame Bram it was certainly a, a big deal for him, I think a lot of people expected it was going to be a cakewalk for Bram in that contest, but the Golden Queen went all wrong and got the victory and we'll go for a cover here not quite done yet and I think it made Aldridge realise that he could do it that he was able to take on an international star man who wrestled in television and pay-per-view in the old world and he could get the victory over it. Of course his work with the genius Lanny Popo has benefited Aldridge as well so he just runs forearms down in the face of Jason Reed. It's helped Aldridge rethink what he does, how he sees himself in his craft. Of course he trains constantly does look Aldridge. He's been better than he's ever been. Singing and getting the victory are two different things. Jason Reed's not going to do anything. A fight as he slides around and rolls up Luke Aldridge and nearly gets a victory there. Ah, he runs right at the clothesline. And Aldridge, oh, folds him up. 
Kick in the leg as well. Could be hard for Reed to kick out, but kick out he does. The Jason hasn't returned to the Michel and hasn't got the shot at the Showdown Championship just to go home empty handed. And he's never held singles gold in WCL before. This could be a big opportunity for him. And Kevin Williams have kind of dissolved the team, if you like, and will have solo endeavours. And we would love to prove that he can be a success in the singles ranks as well as the tag ranks. And beating the Colts would be great for him if he could manage that. Just set him up, charging in. It took a bit too long and we took away. This way Jason can uh, do well in this contest when he gets a bit ahead of steam. He can move with his speed and his quickness. Back suplex. Again, Aldred 17 stone, he's not a light man, but Reed got him with a back suplex and goes in for the cover. Aldridge still kicking out. Resting shield and belt stays around his waist for the time being. He can just a couple of moves together to properly turn the match in his favour. But he's giving Aldridge time to recover a little. Obviously, Jason needs to take most of the punishment in this contest, so he needs a bit of time to recover as well. Big neck breaker. And goes straight in for the cover, scurries over. But the exhale not quite done yet. Because all it takes that count of three. Reed needs to beat Aldridge, but Aldridge doesn't need to beat Reed. It's that champion's advantage that you have. And Aldridge, oh, swung the big clothesline, but telegraphed it. Reed kicked out of the way and body slams him. And goes straight in for a cover as well, not hanging around here. A lot of people might hit a slam and then maybe posed. Thought about what they're going to do next, come off the ropes. Reed went straight in for the cover after the body slam because he realises the importance that if you've got your opponent down, you should pin them because that's how you win these contests. You don't get paid by the hour. And all it needs is one opportunity and you can lose the match. It's a three second count, remember. Oh, except for Calvin Recliner. Oh, just got out of it and goes straight to the eyes, gouges away at them. And that's the tactics that Aldridge likes to employ. And it's a DD6. Drops Jason right off the skull. He's going to end this one. Look, Aldridge will retain the show that championship. He doesn't. Jason Reed kicked out the DD6. That's impressive. He landed head first. But he was still able to get a shoulder off the canvas. I think that shows just how much Jason Reed has improved. Certainly over the past year or so. Aldridge sitting in the corner biding his time. He's planning his next move. Just a curb stomp before, but we can go from right here. Oh, could go for the swing away. But Reed obviously scouted it. And now hits the Calvin recliner. But look, Aldridge rolls away. I think that's inadvertent on Reed's part. Aldridge landed and was able to use the momentum from crashing down at the canvas to roll. And Jason Reed finds that his opponent has moved across the ring. He couldn't get an immediate cover. But Jason Reed now in the corner. What's he going to do? Oh, just moved out the way down in the corner. Rolls him up. Hang on, he's got a feet in the ropes as well. He should both get in the ropes. And it's enough to hold down Jason Reed's shoulders. was a spirited performance. Jason Reed looked like he was in firm control of his match. Aldridge stepped to the side, Reed hit the corner and Aldridge rolled up and had to put his feet on the ropes. Regardless, he pins Jason Reed and he retains the wrestling showdown championship. Well, the XL Luke Aldridge retains the wrestling showdown championship over Jason Reed, but he has to use his feet on the ropes to get the victory. Aldridge has proven time and time again that he is willing to break the rules wherever possible in order to gain a victory and in particular retain the showdown championship. But he is going to have his hands full on May the 10th in Edinburgh because in a non-tournament match at 7 Deadly Sin Stage 2, 
the XL Lucorders will be defending the Wrestling Showdown Championship against a man making his return to WTL for the first time in a few years. You've probably seen him on WOS Wrestling. He recently appeared as part of the NXT UK tapings in Glasgow. That's right, BT Gunn comes back to W3L May the 10th in Edinburgh and he will face Luke Aldridge for the Wrestling Showdown Championship. In addition to that, of course, we've got the other big non-tournament tag team match as a very good Mr. Yoon G. Mackey and the best, the beautiful, the only Emily Hayden take on the Supreme Leader of the First Order, Jayla Dark and Tenacious Johnny Lyons in a huge tag team match. And of course, the Seven Deadly Sins Tournament will be finished off as a second part of it, stage two, of course, in Edinburgh on one half of the semi-finals, which are fought under submission rules. It's the Edinburgh Derby as bad by Liam Thompson takes on the original Craig Stevens. On another hand, it's the contingency plan colliding again as Dickie Divers takes on Taylor Bryden, the two winners to meet in a last man standing match later that night. What an event that's going to be. And of course, remember, May 31st we go to Geisley, June 1st we're in Newcastle, June 2nd Stockton and Tees, June 14th we are back in Broxburn. All these events sponsored by our pals at Crafty Connoisseur, Newcastle co-sponsors by those amazing people at Pizza Daddy. Show our sponsor some love, tell them we said hello. And make sure you get your tickets for as many of these events as you can get yourself along to, especially Seven Deadly Sins Stage 2. That is the next one on the horizon. You want to come to that, trust me, it's going to be awesome. And you can see what happens by being there in person by getting your tickets from our website, w3lwrestling.com. Sign up to the mailing list while you're there, why don't you? Give us a like on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, join us on Instagram, subscribe to the channel you're watching. You'll get notified every Sunday at 12pm when a new edition of Wrestling Show that is released. And you'll also get notified when we put up other cool stuff like Seven Deadly Sins Stage 1 and the other amazing things we've put up in the past. Use the hashtag W3L Wrestling Showdown. Tell us who you think is going to win Seven Deadly Sins. Will BT Gun become new Wrestling Showdown champion? Who should come to Newcastle? Guys, they installed to run these with us. Get in touch and let us know. And then come back in seven days' time because, yes, we'll be even closer still to Seven Deadly Sins Stage 2. We will have more news about our events, more amazing action for you because yes, it's Wrestling Showdown every Sunday, 12pm on the W3 Network.